Hello and welcome to Camp Xbox. Today we're delving into Soldier of Fortune 2 Double Helix, a first person shooter that originally hit the PC and later found its way to the original Xbox on June 24th, 2002. It was published by Activision and developed for the Xbox by Gratuitous Games, with its original developer being Raven Software. Soldier of Fortune 2 comes as a recommendation, thank you so much for the recommendation. Going in, I was pretty clueless about this game series, and after some research, it turns out that Soldier of Fortune was a significant PC first-person shooter notorious for its intense violence. The sequel carries on that tradition of the original and still draws in an online player base on PC. As a fan of first-person shooters, I was curious to see how this port holds up, so let's dive into Soldier of Fortune 2. In this game, you step into the Boots of Mullins, a mercenary tasked with thwarting a secret plot to unleash a virus upon the world. The sinister plan includes deploying a computer virus to obliterate all files, making the creation of an antivirus impossible. As Mullen progresses, the layers of the plot unfolds, revealing the motives behind the scheme, exposing the masterminds, and you uncover covert moles lurking in the shadows. It's similar to a government espionage novel translated into video game form. Taking on themes like germ warfare, allowing moments for the narrative to slow down and explore dialogue. While not the most riveting storyline, it approaches its plot with a certain level of seriousness that's commendable. The tone is dark and brooding, lacking a good amount of humor, which might not appeal to everyone. However, for those who love government intrigue and military warfare, Soldier of Fortune 2 delivers a satisfying experience. Just don't expect extravagant cutscenes, they're quite bare bones in scope and framing, and they're very heavy on dialogue. Surprisingly, there's a substantial amount of talking, which can make spaces between cutscenes a bit dull. I do appreciate the effort put into the plot, it sets the stage for a diverse range of locations, and introduces some enjoyable twists along the way, it just can slow the pacing of the game down a little. Soldier of Fortune 2 delivers a gameplay experience that mirrors many first-person shooters of its time. Armed with an assortment of guns, the shooting mechanics are solid. It has a satisfying and visceral feel. The feedback on the controller, which has vibrations synchronized with each gunshot, adds an immersive touch. Details like Mullins flipping his gun when not in use contributes to an overall feeling of fun and enjoyment. The shooting is mainly done in corridor-style environments with different areas and long hallways. It creates an arcade-like feel. Personally, I appreciate the simplicity of a straightforward first-person shooter, and Soldier of Fortune 2 executes these elements effectively. It feels great to mow down enemies with some impressive, powerful weapons. However, the game takes a hit with its stealth mechanics. Several levels focus on sneaking around, but the implementation feels either too easy to get caught or just plain underdeveloped. This aspect was not enjoyable for me, and I found sticking to the game's core strength, shooting everything in sight, was more engaging. Escort missions where you accompany a crew are a low point in the experience as well. The crew moves painfully slow. If you stray too far, it results in sudden death, making these levels tedious. Additionally, the game suffers from frame rate drops in crowded areas, and it slows down the pace significantly. Despite these drawbacks, Soldier of Fortune 2 remains true to its core premise of shooting everything that comes your way, providing a fun diversion. While there are more dynamically designed games in the Xbox catalog, it caters well to fans of straightforward first-person shooters. An interesting addition is the random mission generator, which offers replay value with randomly generated mission types. However, the execution just falls a bit short, with the generation of levels feeling very basic and there's not a lot of variety. It's a cool concept to mess around with, but it's just not as strong as it needs to be. The graphics in Soldier of Fortune 2 is one of its weaker elements. It does give me a sense of nostalgia because it feels a lot like early PC first-person shooters. The blocky aesthetics are very current for that era, but on the Xbox, they just come across as muddy. The graphics suffer from a lack of clarity with many areas feeling excessively dark and featuring low-resolution textures. 
Daytime areas generally fare better. They'd showcase some standout details on buildings, like the train station that has its payphones and benches. However, jungle environments, for instance, appear as a messy sea of green. The game is plagued by graphical glitches where things in your peripheral vision will lose textures before they go off screen. Characters frequently glitch through walls in this game and screen tearing is a prevalent issue. In comparison, I actually bought and tested the GOG version of this game and the PC version on higher settings presents a significantly crisper and polished look. Now that being said, it can achieve higher resolutions because I'm playing on a modern PC. But even if I bring down the settings to the lowest settings, the Xbox rendition seems comparable to the lowest settings. The console could have handled at least medium settings, but even on low, the Xbox version struggles with poor frame rates. While I've seen good ports to Xbox, the PC version stands out in terms of visual quality. The graphic violence in the game is good on the Xbox, with blood spraying all around, but comparing it to the PC, the dismemberment is uncanny. Yet, if you're a gore fan, you will still find some great effects here. In terms of gameplay, both versions are quite similar, with the choice between mouse and keyboard or controller largely depends on what you prefer. The major pain point here is the visuals not looking nearly anywhere close to good. The music in Soldier of Fortune 2 is surprisingly great. While it remains rather quiet and plays in the background, it effectively complements the game's action. The simple electronic beats are a nice background to the gameplay. The gun sound effects seamlessly integrate into the game as well, providing satisfying feedback with the vibration, especially when you're wearing a headset. However, a notable audio drawback is the death noises made by enemies. Initially, they're okay, but they just repeat the same blood-gurgling noise and it becomes grating and annoying. It diminishes the overall experience. Similarly, when you die, there is a loud scream that doesn't even sound like the voice actor and it sounds like a cartoon. I absolutely hated that noise. On the positive side though, the voice actors deliver a commendable performance. It aligns well with the game's serious tone. The darker narrative is conveyed through their work and I think they all contribute to the game. One major upside to this game is its online multiplayer, which has been brought back with Insignia. I had the chance to play with a bunch of my viewers and stream with the community. And a big thank you to everyone who joined in, I had a blast, and in my opinion this is where the true strengths of the game shine through. The fun, shoot and spray gunplay is the core experience and the game runs wonderfully in multiplayer. The maps are surprisingly well designed, they are all put together with nice verticality and tight corridors. We had the opportunity to play a few game modes and I thought they all worked well. However, the most fun is to be had in the deathmatch modes. Looking back now, the online multiplayer is probably what brought a lot of people back. While the story mode may not be the most interesting, simply going around shooting people is a lot of fun. So as an aside, I will say the multiplayer offers a great fast paced time and enhances the overall experience. However, for most buyers today, multiplayer may not be a major factor in your purchase. It requires soft modding your Xbox and setting up a full session of people to play. And if you go through this effort, you'll have a lot of fun online, but I won't say that it's a major factor in my final consensus. And I would recommend playing this online if you wanna go through all those steps to do it. In conclusion, Soldier of Fortune 2 presents a mixed experience as a first person shooter on the Xbox. Gameplay is the main factor of any shooter and this one does offer a satisfying shooting gallery experience. The simplicity of shoot and not thinking adds an entertaining aspect to the game. However, the weak stealth elements, the slow paced level objectives, it all detracts from the overall enjoyment. While the music enhances the atmosphere, certain sound effects, especially repetitive death noises can disrupt your immersion. Graphically, the Xbox version falls short, delivering a muddy and glitchy presentation which is a stark contrast to the solid PC version. While it's expected that the console won't match the PC's definition, the Xbox version appears weaker than is necessary. Unfortunately, it doesn't stand out visually. In conclusion, I'd recommend opting for the PC version for a superior experience. 
Still, if you're curious about the port, be prepared for a mostly fun, yet graphically glitchy adventure. On my Xbox ranking list, I am going to put Soldier of Fortune 2 at number 56. I think I'd rather play this over Fusion Frenzy, but the visual style of Incredible Hulk is much better than Soldier of Fortunes. But that wraps it up for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. Also, subscribe to keep up with the retro Xbox content. Comment below with any memories. I might have a different opinion than you, and I would love to hear your opinion because the most important opinion is your own. Also, I want to give a big shout out to all my YouTube channel members. Thank you so much for your support. And if you want to become a YouTube channel member and help support the channel, you can just hit that join button right under this video, and there's a couple tiers to look at. But I'll see you here next time at Camp Xbox.